sorry, just getting situated. I don't know if you can tell, but I actually just got my hair colored today. It's why it's curled because my amazing hair salon person um, that I've been going to, she curled my hair so that she can take pictures. Um, I've been going to her for year, years. Camille, I love you. Um, anyway, so I, yeah, got my hair colored today. What do you think? Pretty subtle. Anyway, why am I talking about this? I um, just watched the recent episode of The Bachelor. And, oh yeah, let me just go ahead and say hello, YouTube friends, and welcome to my little corner of the internet, where today I'm going to be talking about the most recent episode of The Bachelor, Clayton season. And I think it is week seven, I think. Uh, this was a quiet episode. Like, there was still drama going on, but it was... Maybe because Shanae is not around. I don't know. Um, I wondered if it was going to get sort of loud and abrasive between Mara and Sarah. And though they did have a talk, it wasn't really... <laughs> I feel like a strand of hair. Oh. Yeah, I got it. Okay. <laughs> I felt a strand of hair on my lip. Sorry about that. Hmm. Where was I? What was I talking about? Ah, uh, Sarah and Mara. Uh, yeah, they did end up having sort of... A conversation um, but it didn't really get loud so I don't I don't know why I just sort of after watching the episode that was one of the first thoughts that came to mind was oh, okay yeah it was they, there was drama and it a lot happened but it was quiet and understated and I think I kind of prefer that type of drama I don't know when we get into like yelling and screaming I just uh, it's too much so let's go ahead and get into it. The episode starts off where last week ended, of course, because uh, they just love cliffhangers this season. And Sarah is coming into the room where all the girls are at. Um, they had been wondering if she would be going home. Of course, she's not. And so she's there and she does address them all about the conversation that her and Clayton had and talking about how you know i was called out for not being ready and it was a move probably meant to send me home but it did the opposite effect like it just brought us closer which mara's face is just kind of like oh okay <laughs> um and so she of course asked the girls okay who who's does, do they want to step forward it takes a second, but Mara eventually is like, yeah, you know, I said something, but it was pertaining towards me and just how I felt, which I thought was an interesting way of putting it because it's not pertaining to Mara. It's just, it is about Sarah. So I think she was just trying to sugarcoat it in some sort of way and it didn't really make sense, <laughs> but Sarah had then mentioned to her that a specific from her time is with Clayton is that he acknowledged that someone must be feeling threatened and so took an opportunity to so sort of like a last ditch effort to get rid of Sarah. Um, which I think I vaguely remember that happening, actually. But it was sort of a conversation that both of them were having together. But yeah, I, I so anyway. Um, but it just sort of ended over there. And we go into the cocktail party. And um, Clayton walks in and he addresses the group. And then he actually pulls Serene first, which was interesting because generally the lead doesn't pull someone aside unless there is something specific they need to talk about usually addressing some sort of drama or yeah just something had happened and they need clarification you know that is usually the only time that a lead will pull someone aside especially during a, a, a cocktail party portion sort of thing but anyway I think that 
means something. It stands out a little bit, even like he pulled her to chat and actually had, you know, set up the jar the jars of twinkly lights uh, to sort of mimic fireflies, and it was in honor of her cousin who had recently passed away and this beautiful childhood memory that she has of them together, which obviously really touched Serene and she's like, oh, you know, he was really listening and that means a lot, which of course it does. Um, you just wonder if he set it up or if producers set it up or maybe he asked producers and that would be super sweet. Um, regardless cute moment. And um, Mara pulls Sarah aside to talk with her because there was a moment or something that Sarah had said that really rubbed her the wrong way. Probably the, it, yeah, it was a last ditch effort comment. And so that rubbed her the wrong way. And she really just wanted to talk to Sarah about how you're very confident and you like to sort of boast about your relationship and the thing is it's sort of rubbing some of the girls the wrong way and I just have some advice for you maybe you just reel it in a little bit <laughs> so it's like uh, okay um and like, I get what she is saying, but also, why are you sort of policing her or trying to give her advice or tell her things? I mean, address it, sure, but I, I don't know. Um, what was interesting over here is... Rachel has an ITM where she's sort of agreeing with what Sarah says and talking about how she felt uncomfortable from Sarah in sort of the intimate details that Sarah will share about her time with Clayton. And these are this is the first time we're hearing hints of Sarah talks a lot about her own relationship and it it's the reason apparently why very early on Teddy and Rachel had spoken with Clayton during their one-on-one -on -one times at cocktail parties or just like the evening portions of group dates and very early on sort of requesting from him that he validate them and continue to validate them like they're going to need validation through this process and I remember at that time wondering why is this already coming up it is very early and you only just met him and like no real connection that sort of relationship has really taken place yet and you're already asking for the need of validation that that conversation topic does come up it's usually around this time you know later on in the season when you've built a connection and it's really sort of going somewhere and then you're hearing from the other girls their own connections and it starts to shake you because you feel so strongly about the connection that you have and suddenly you're like oh wait does he maybe have this with someone else so I get the fear and everything it just was surprising for it to be happening early on and now we know why um before I move on, did I delete the last? Okay. Yeah, I had not deleted it and it's very important that I do because otherwise I'll be talking and suddenly this will go off and I won't realize and I'll have talked for like 15 plus minutes and not have that recording. So <laughs> anyway, moving on, they go into the the rose ceremony the last three girls, it's sort of between is Genevieve, Eliza, and Mara, and Genevieve is the one who gets the last rose. So, I mean, sweet, sweet Eliza is gone. She is so pretty and cute and sweet and really just 
nice. And I look forward to seeing her on Paradise if she does go on there. I think that she's a gem of a lady. And I'd like to get to know her more. We only got, you know, little snippets here and there early on and then she just sort of fell to the wayside. I was a little surprised that Mara sort of graciously left. Like she said goodbye to the girls, went to him and and thanked him and was like, you know, you're a great guy and you deserve someone good. And then sort of turned around and was like, I love you all. She said that twice. Like she sort of reiterated it and did say, I love you all. Um, so yeah, that was interesting. But I did, you know, it tugged a little bit. I felt sort of bad when she was having her um, sort of ITM moment outside the venue and she's sort of crying and she's like she's just ready for love and wants to find her love and knows that one day it'll happen and all of this will be worth it um it's just she's ready for that and it's very apparent that that's you know it, she's genuine in that and it's true and so i feel for her um I hope that, you know, she finds the person. I think she let stuff get to her a little bit in this situation, which I would assume is not hard to deflect from. Um, you know, they're running on low sleep and not great eating habits and... <laughs> <laughs> but like drinking and all of this kind of stuff so all of it together I'm sure it's just really hard to rein in your emotions sometimes and she clearly just isn't vibing well with characteristics like Sarah and apparently no one in the house is really vibing well with the characteristics of Sarah. This was really difficult because, like, as we go on, we're hearing from the other girls so much about how Sarah talks about her relationship and gives intimate details, and she talks about it so much, and does she realize what she's doing or does she not, is, like, a conversation that they have during the group date between... Rachel, Gabby, Teddy, I think it was just those three, um, talking about Sarah while she was in her therapy session, because that's what the group date is. Uh, before that, though, Susie has her one-on-one -on -one time with him, and it's exploring Vienna, and they are sweet and cute and fun and flirty, and he takes her on a shopping spree. Oh, actually, she doesn't explore too much, I don't think. It's the shopping spree, mainly. Um, and she buys a lot of clothes. I will say that this was sort of sweet to see Clayton in that sort of, you know, shopping boyfriend role. <laughs> but he was a little cheerleader, hype man sort of thing, and every single outfit she came in, he came out in he's just like damn you look good and like all this kind of stuff so it was sort of really adorable um she uh is then taken to an austrian designer who's designed all these sort of very princessy gowns i will say that first light pink one with all the feathers Oh my goodness, <laughs> that was a really pretty dress. I also really like the um, sort of netting one with all the floral prints with the sort of golden belt in the center. I really like that one too. Anyway, they were all obviously just beautiful dresses and she was trying it on one by one and Clayton's, you know, hype manning it up. And um, she walks into the room with all the girls and she's got two just like, handfuls of many bags of clothes um and expensive shoes and all this kind of stuff so of course the girls are jealous and she goes off to her room and then a couple of minutes later a guy is knocking on the door and